Let me hip y'all to what makes up a pro athlete. Now, I don't get simple on me. Don't get lazy on me. Oh, because he big. Oh, he's big. He's fast. He's strong. Nah, nah, nah. That's cliche. Everybody knows that. You got to qualify physically. But what's the secret sauce, right? The best kept secret from all the fans, all the people on the outside, is the worst kept secret for us athletes. So now I'm going to give you guys that secret sauce. So I'm not promoting this product, even though I just went to Amazon and got me one. (laughs) I've been hip to it, but I was like, it's time because of this video right here. Check this out and then let's chop it up so y'all can know what these athletes are really doing. The data behind how a high-level athlete's body reacts during competition is fascinating. And there's no better example than Ronaldo's numbers from this past weekend. So for those of you that don't know, Ronaldo's wearing a Whoop right here. It's essentially a 24-7 fitness wearable that tracks all of your data to monitor your sleep, your recovery, your strain, and your overall health. Ronaldo actually likes it so much that he doesn't even take it off during matches. He just hides it underneath the tape right there. And a bunch of other professional athletes wear Whoops too, like Rory McIlroy, Justin Thomas, and Scotty Scheffler. Varrock Coley wears one while he plays. Michael Phelps wears one. And Patrick Mahomes wears one underneath his sleeve while he plays too. But the best part about this is guys like Ronaldo and Rory and Mahomes are actually investors in Whoop too. So they frequently allow Whoop to release real-time data from their biggest competitions. So this is Patrick Mahomes' data from a 2022 playoff game against the Buffalo Bills. You'll see at the very bottom that he averaged 144 beats per minute on his heart rate for two and a half hours straight. But the more interesting part is that he literally has ice in his veins because his heart rate jumped every time he left the field. And then he was able to control it and lower his beats per minute every time he went back on the field with the ball in his hands. And Ronaldo is the same way because Whoop's data from Portugal's last match shows us that Ronaldo was able to enter a flow state by lowering his heart rate from 180 beats per minute down to 100 beats per minute right before he took his penalty kick. Man, goodness. Hit me with that damn TikTok bump, dude. (laughs) Somebody gonna make a song off of that. Trust. Ah, let's get into it. Um, This is to help a lot of you parents out there uh, in terms of how you're trying to condition your child, not to just be a pro athlete, but to be the best athlete they can be. And everyone always talks about what are you eating, where you're working out, but not the how and how it's affecting you on the inside. So that, therefore, you can demonstrate better abilities on the field, on the court, et cetera. So let's get into this. The most fascinating thing that jumped out to me was the fact that Patrick Mahomes played a game for two and a half hours, and his heart rate was at 144 average. Why is that fascinating? Because when you get to 144, oh, you huffing and puffing. Now, it's not like the most intense anaerobic workout you can have but it's getting there but for two and a half hours to average that that's next level so when we're talking about mental makeup we're talking about physical makeup we also got to talk about your biological makeup and how you can rig it right how you can actually affect your systems so you go out there and be the best performer first we got to know the difference between aerobic and and anaerobic. For those who don't know, just keep it simple. When you talk about aerobic activities, you're talking about activities you can do while you're being fueled by oxygen. When you talk about anaerobic activities, you're not being fueled by oxygen. They're actually breaking down all the sugar in your body, your carbs, and using that. But then that produces lactic acid, which makes all of a sudden your butt tired and your legs heavy we all know that we all been there before right give you some pure definition of it i saw anaerobic means without oxygen it's a heart rate between 80 90 percent of your maximum heart rate that's getting up there y'all my maximum heart rate was 182 i think for Mahomes it was 191 i thought i saw that so tilting tilting in this heart rate zone your body can't get enough oxygen to fuel muscles so that turns the glucose found in carbs the body burns carbs quickly producing lactic acid what i just told y'all but it has a hard time clearing and cleaning the lactic acid all right so that's what happens to be the best athlete you got to be able to go to that level of intensity and then maintain it here's the kicker You talked about Ronaldo. You talk about Patrick Mahomes. What they're able to do is also bring it down. The heart rate goes from 180 180 to 110, like that. Now, depending on sport, that's even more important depending on the sport. In football, 
is critical. It's crucial because in football, you're looking like, I go out there, six, seven seconds. Heart rate up, 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 up. Now I got to bring it back down because I only got 10, 20 seconds before they about to snap the ball again. So I need to go up, down, up, down, et cetera. Now what's fascinating also is Patrick Mahomes will go to the sidelines and guess what would happen? He wouldn't relax. His heart rate wouldn't come down. It actually spiked, which is mind blowing. Like how does your heart rate spike when you're not doing something as physically exert as you were on the field, right? That's not the same level of exertion. Well, y'all ever hear when they used to say, man, you could burn so many calories studying. You could burn more calories studying than you can jogging. And I used to like, what? Uh, right? This sucker up here controlling all those hormones, which could create and changes all of your functionality. You can just sit still thinking through it and be spiking your heart rate, spiking your organs, et cetera. So I saw that, and I was like, damn, dog. How your heart rate spike when you leave the field? Well, it's that. Now, the best athletes are able to have a conditioning, not a control, a conditioning that controls their heart rate. So when it's time, pressure moments, who's going to make the pressure situation? Who's going to be the victor in that moment? It's going to be the one who can control that heart rate. It's going to be the one who's going to be victorious is the one who can control himself. Because when you spiked, you kind of at the mercy of the heart rate. What does fatigue make? A coward of all men. So it's crazy. I see all these parents all the time. They're looking at their kid. And they're looking at his shoe size. Oh, look how big he is. They're looking at, you know, how tall he is. And I'm like, yeah, all that count. Look at his thumbs. He's going to be huge. He got those paws. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then I watch the kid and I'm like, oh. One, is he even trying to exert himself to that level to get into some anaerobic conditioning? Because some kids just like to jog. <laughs> they get it from their daddy, right? <laughs> they just jog out. And then, even if they are, are they the type that's going to huff and puff once they get there? Or are they going to be able to relax in that moment and bring it back down to get back up there? You got to look for those little things. That's what I'm talking about. The roller coaster effect. So... In prime peak condition, I was able to control because of my conditioning. My heart rate would go up, 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 and then you they coming right back to the line. Are you ready? You know, I mean, of course, no huddle Denver. I mean, it was too much on it. You know, Shannon Sharp and Elway and all them boys coming at you, it was a lot on it. But at the same time, you can control that by your conditioning. So – I just wanted to give you guys a little hip to this, like uh, let the parents know out there that it ain't just about how big your kid is, how fast your kid is, how strong your kid is. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, you know, levels match up. So now you got another big, fast, strong kid. What's going to be the difference? What's going to make your kid get to the next level and then dominate at that next level? It's going to be what's inside of them, not just mentally, but also the conditioning of it. So condition your athletes better, anaerobic. You ain't got all that jogging around the park two times. Okay, coach. All right, baby. Stop. That ain't going to help you. It gives you a base. I shouldn't say it wouldn't help. It gives you a foundation. gives you a base. But what gets you to the next level, beep, 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 beep. that spike, get on that roller coaster and ride it. All right, y'all, beat it up in the comments. Let's talk about that. See how your kids are. Boah.